Sean here with Junk Monkey Paint Company and welcome back to another daily vlog. Today I'm going to answer a question that I kid you not, I get pretty much every single day somewhere across our social media platforms. The question of, Sonia, how do I figure out how to price my painted furniture? I'm going to thrift stores, I'm going to Facebook Marketplace, I'm buying stuff, you know, from my neighbors, all those sorts of things. I'm putting the work into them, but how do I figure out how much to sell it for? Like, what is the price? How do I figure out that whole process? I always say that when you're starting off in business that, you know, you're gonna grow a lot, you're gonna learn a lot, and the way I like to live is I never lose, I always learn. So there's been times in the past I've priced too low, I've let things go out the door, I've felt that pit in my stomach, and I felt overworked and I did not feel like I got paid enough, right? If you keep doing the same thing, what's that saying? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And so when you go through a season of underpricing yourself, you know what? You don't take it out on your customer. You don't go, oh gosh, golly gee, I charge you too less. I'm going to have to up the price that I originally, originally quoted you. No, you honor that. You run your business with integrity. But as a business owner, you take a look inward and you go, I got to raise my prices so how do you set your pricing number one is the traditional what's called the traditional markup way and this is what you see everywhere the cost of goods the cost of supplies that went into it equals the cost of the product and all you do my friends is double your price so in layman's terms you got what you paid for the dresser you got the amount of money that went in for your paint your supplies what you did to clean it seal it all that good stuff you have an amount you add those two together and that is the total cost of the product to start with the actual final product that you are about to sell Boom, you bought a dresser for $40, you put $20 worth of products on the top of it from beginning to end, and then at the end of the day, it brings us to $60, you multiply that by two, and your dresser is now sold for double your money, which is $120. Easy peasy, right? Trust me, there are many department stores, they may go up to 300%, 350%, and some products might have 500% markup on them, but that's how the markup formula works. Number two, this is called, this is what I call, because this is my model right here, I'm gonna tell you, this is called the end goal structure. Nothing fancy, you just go to yourself, you ask yourself, what is my end goal? And an end goal can be something like, maybe you were like me, you wanted to quit that corporate job, you wanted to be able to sustain yourself by painting and being creative every single day by being your own boss. Other goals can be things like, you just wanna have a part-time income. Other goals can be, hey, I wanna be able to take my family to Disney this year. So you basically determine, because everybody's different, everybody lives life differently, what is your end goal? You're flipping furniture for a reason. What is your end goal? Okay, you're ready for the end goal structure? All right, this is how easy it is. So how much money do you need to have and hold in your hands so that you can meet what your end goal is? I have to tell you that when I started my business, this is what moved my business ahead. I wanted to go back to Canada. At that time, I did not have a lot of money and could not afford to go back to see my family. I knew that even though Matt was working a full-time job, my husband, I was working a full-time job, they were, we were both contributing to our household, but at the same time, it really did not feel like our bank account was growing. There was no room for me to be able to purchase a flight ticket. So I added up how much money I needed to make to be able to go back home. And then I came up with an amount. So let's say for example, your amount is $1,000. So now all I have to do is make sure that I find and flip 10 dressers over the next 30 days, over the next month, so that I can earn $100, crisp $100 bill off of each of those 10 dressers equals $1,000. So how do I price? I just look at what I purchased, that dresser, the supplies that went into it, that's my base amount, and I tacked on my $100 to it. So if I have $40 in that dresser and I need to make $100 off of it, that's my $100 markup, cha-ching, $140. $100 profit comes back to me. I put it into my little bin over here on the side, and now I have nine more dressers to complete. So what is your end goal? It is different from everybody because at the end of the day, we all live differently. When I left the corporate world and I still had to do my end goal model, well, Sonia, how much does it take to be able to survive each month for your family? How much do you have to pay for your mortgage, for your vehicles, for your insurance, to be able to eat all the things that go into life? What is the basic amount that we could survive on when I took that leap of faith, put my notice in, quit my full-time salary job, and went off to be self-employed? If you're flipping furniture for profit, 
ask yourself, what is your why? Why am I doing this? And make that part of your end goal and set your prices accordingly. Number three, hourly pricing. How much do you want to make per hour? Ask yourself, how much do I want to get paid per hour when I work on this dresser? Again, it's going to be different for everyone because we all live different ways and we all have different amounts that would make us happy. So pick yours. So for example, you go out and you find a wooden rocking chair and you purchased it at a auction or at a yard sale for $10. We can do that any day of the week. Don't you just love it with what we do? So easy, so fun, oh, sidetrack. So you purchase the rocker for $10. Then you paint it, maybe you have like $10 of paint uh, onto the rocker into what you used in your supplies. Okay, that's $20 that I have now into this rocker. How much do I wanna get paid per hour? I spent two hours working on it. I wanna get paid $25 per hour. So that's 25 and 25 plus the 20, the rocker and the supplies. So let's see, 20, 25, 25. Okay, I'm gonna sell my rocker for $70. Remember, you can change your pricing model at any given time. Just do what's best for you. Because when you are the business owner, then you can do this business any way you want to. There is no correct pricing model. And this is one of the things that when people ask me this question, how should I price? Or they ask somebody else, how should I price? You gotta ask yourself, what's the goal here? What do you want to achieve? So hopefully this was helpful to somebody out there. Let me know if it was helpful. Let me know what model you guys choose to, to use. Or maybe you heard me speak on one tonight that just kind of speaks to you. Hopefully I've broken this down it really doesn't have to be hard business should be fun and what's that whole saying if you do what you love every single day you never work a day in your life so let's get the pricing stuff down knocked out and move on to the creating shall we I'll see you guys again tomorrow we'll probably get into some creating let me know if you love these business chats and I promise I will do more of them for you you can't hide what's inside and I'm a girl that loves to get creative and loves to get creative in business all right I'll see you guys again tomorrow bye